Ryan, where have you been? Little something called surf culture. You ever heard of it? I was at the beach all day. I started surfing, met some of the boys. We ended up starting a podcast. Yeah. Wait, you were five hours late because you were doing a different podcast? Yeah, it's called the Surf Cast. No mics, no electronics, just boys out on the water, surfing, chilling, chatting. We're going to stockpile some episodes. Listen, if you're going to be late, the least that okay, you could you do- you insecure fat man. You need to stop with this controlling behavior. I wouldn't expect you to understand surf culture. You're tight, by the way. You, Jonah, Look, it's epidemic. not surf culture for you to tell me to come in early and then you're late. I'm not going to try to explain to you how surf culture works, okay? The boys get together. We started some podcasts. We had some drinks. I bought them to dinner on your credit card. Yes, surf culture. Now they're on their way here. So. Who? Who is what? Yes, on their way the nine boys are on their way here because I thought they'd be a great addition to the podcast, potentially Mike's two through ten, and obviously that'd bump you to eleven, but it'd be a good way to promote the surf cast. So what? anyways, C yo, could we're here at the surf right, cast. Could you please the boys not promote cast. another podcast on our podcast? Uh, I'm so actually in awe right now. Now he's controlling my social media behavior. I hope everyone sees this. Oh, what? Look, my therapist says that it is not my okay the way that- My therapist, my therapist. The only therapy I need is hitting the waves, looking for that next big bomb. I wouldn't expect Barney's to understand this, so Look, that's we, why you're you giving Mike you know, for life. I don't want to argue. Could we please just start This is a man show. trying to dim my light, and I'm what? honestly, everyone's watching is going to be empathizing with no, what I'm going I through right now. I'm a man that Ryan. doesn't want to see me shine. No, I deserve yes. respect. He hasn't hung I'm a, man. a single time in his freaking life. Wouldn't understand surf culture. It smashed him in the face with a surfboard. What? Hey, what's up? Is this the surf tavern? Is Chad there? Yeah, because I'm currently being abused, so if you can send abused. a paddy wagon, do you guys have no, one of those? No, I deserve and respect. By the way, a large paddy wagon. This is a fat, insecure man, and you're going to have to take him in there kicking and screaming. You know what? Screw you. I hope you have fun with all your new men on your new podcast, because I quit. And you know how I told you that your salt life tattoo is cool? It's not. The boys. It's the boys cast. The lads. It's the boys cast. The dudes. We pack a set for boys cast. The bros. It's the boys cast. The homies. It's the boys cast. The dudes. It's the boys cast. The boys cast. Boys, boys, boys. You already know what it is. The boys cast coming at you. Lot of this is the only Jonah Hill take that you're gonna need in your life. However, before that, we have a few other things. Yes, we do. A one teaser, if you one, will. One, Danny got the the peen enlargement. He's up to fucking a couple Nine inches. inches of girth. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's it's up all to, girth. The best. Well, here's my favorite thing this week, though, is because. It's like it was your standard thing, but it always comes up where they, you know, some girl says like something like menstruators, and everyone's like, "Oh, they shouldn't say menstruators," so they're calling the girls bleeding people. Yeah, this is this is how it started. They weren't happy with menstruators. Isn't bleeding people a horror film from the seventies? That's what I'm saying. So uh, basically, it started out with like, oh, me they were replaced him with menstruators, right? And then some people weren't happy with menstruators. Like even even some people like Young Turks and those types of people were yeah. kind of like, this is where well, I that's, draw yeah, my well, line. Well, that's, I'm yeah, yeah. Isn't that like their whole like imploding <laughs> over there because And of then that? also there's another thing where they don't like menstruators because men's in the words, you know right. what I mean? So something like that. And then legitimately the place came up with bleeding people and I was like, that might be my favorite <laughs> thing I've ever heard is just describing yeah. women as bleeding people. Yeah, because they couldn't even say like <laughs> womenstrators because <laughs> right. that actually would still... Like it still says women though. Well, that's the thing they can't. You're right for gender inclusivity. They're like, well, it could be any gender, men. But yeah, so it's like that one's not liking a lot. But my favorite thing is just the idea of like, yeah, a couple of you and your bleeding buddies or whatever. Come on out. <laughs> the bleeding crew, <laughs> the the blood blood oath crew, blood right? Boys. Oh, no, can't say boys. They come out and they're just like, it's, it's one day. This is gonna be like the, the head of freaking, you know, the it's gonna be like you know, starting Finland or somewhere, a super aggressive, and it's like their health secretaries come out and it's like, we are now. Men and blood-soaked monsters. <laughs> <laughs> There's two categories the, of people. Yeah, this inclusive uh, <laughs> language in our ever-ending quest to be <laughs> as inclusive as possible. We have we, we have we have two categories of people. We have men and bloody crotches. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bloody you, crotch gang. Are you in? The, you're in the. Are you coming to the men's section or the bloody crotch section? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at these freaking bloody crotches coming down here. Bloody bl crotchety blood. The blood girls. The blood girls. The blood oaths. <laughs> yeah. He who bathes in or she. Sorry, I can't she, be here. She. Yeah. So it's like they who bathe in blood. Yeah, it's just anybody who bleeds. We have men, and then we have the bloody people. Yeah. Blood dripping down the <laughs> walls. It's dripping everywhere. Their underwear is covered in blood. Even a tampon was no match for this bloody mess. Uh, that's the technical term. Yeah. We're thinking of. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, that's just like what we call it now. We're an advanced society, so we don't, yeah. we don't refer to them as women. Every doctor has it. Yeah, we're an advanced society. Every doctor has like a, you know, someone that travels that just does like trailer noises. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, on uh, the men's is like, oh, we need a translator for the women to come in. So are you one of the blood-soaked monsters crawling along the walls, just leaving your bloody puddles every which way that you go, <laughs> smelling up the room, zinc everywhere? Or is it, uh, are you a non-binary? <laughs> are you a non-binary? <laughs> a market for because like there's so many people like chop, chopping their dicks off and then getting fake vages or whatever do you think there's a market for some sort of product that's like you insert a, a, in your v- like fake vagina and, and then, then it's like a slow delay <laughs> Slow release, slow release, right? Like it's it's like um you know those like things you put in like the the dishwasher, <laughs> like those dishwasher pouch packets or whatever. But it's like one of those and blood, and you just fucking jam it up there, and then you just wait and you go, huh? Yeah, they go, are you bleeding? And he goes, maybe I am. Looks at the camera and waits. <laughs> yeah. you know? I guess I'm on my period. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Another blood soaked <laughs> monster. <laughs> <laughs> Some all just like crawling along the floors, <laughs> leaving a pool of blood because like, they have their. That'll probably like pills. a goop, a goop product. That'll be. One I of honestly Goop's say, yeah, yeah, I could see that coming. Through blood for pouches. Sure. Well, someone else was trying to make a, a good argument, which wasn't that crazy, but it was just stupid. Is they were basically well. I, the reason I'm saying it's not that crazy is because I sort of like the sounds of how we could use it. But there was like a. This wasn't even really on some like you know social justice shit. It was basically saying that there is men that they were basically describing it as a period, but they were basically saying that men have something called uh, what was it called? Oh, fuck, they have a good name for it irritable male syndrome oh right, and i don't right. i couldn't tell if it was like a girl trying to put some shit or it was like some nerd but basically the idea was they're saying that like testosterone and your body will make you feel differently they're trying to give guys pms i think that that's what they're saying and, but it's one of those things where even if their reasons are like we all have pms it was like okay so we can have all the benefits now yeah, with nothing changes first well, of all i'm yeah. not coming in today i can't tell you why i have male male this surgery is, this is female propaganda right i here. think it is propaganda but you have to use no, it against them think- no I'll tell you why it's propaganda <laughs> because when men have their PMS, <laughs> it's not or, PMS, it's irritable male syndrome. Irritable ma- so irritable male syndrome or whatever, right? It's like if you just get rid of women, it goes away. But women, if they have PMS all the time, like you don't get rid of men and their PMS goes away. Well, right. You think that the, you're saying that the suggestion, the next logical conclusion it's is we need to not, get rid of them? Well, it's just, no, I'm just saying it's like a chick made this up and goes, oh, yeah, I like testosterone levels drop daily, monthly, and seasonally. The daily changes are not enough for you to really, or are, are enough for you to really notice men's cycles, blah, 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 blah. So they're trying, yeah, you're right. It is women propaganda. So I will give you that for sure. Yeah. But again, with all these things, it's like the same reason as you have to, you know, you can have like 12 fucking chicks for feminism. It's like, imagine getting out of everything. Yo, oh, Danny, can you make dinner tonight? You can't. It's fucking your yeah. little male month. Oh yeah, I hope that, that time of I the hope month that right now. <laughs> the guy, who, the unfortunate man who's with this female feminist <laughs> blogger, is weaponizing his. That's what I'm saying. You have to his, weaponize it. But a she bit. is probably like, well, you know, she'll never let him outshine. So it's like he's got bad whatever it's called, IBS or it's probably not, not IBS, uh, <laughs> irritable IMS. Her IMS. PMS is gonna be fucking <laughs> roof next. You month. have PMS. I'm IMS. I got IMS. You're more IMFing. <laughs> International Monetary Fund. <laughs> yes, my people. Uh, that's his peeps. You know what I'm saying? No, but you can't. You can't tell me a little bit. You can see a scenario where you could just, if you were with that girl a little bit, she's like on PMS, and you're just like, I'm not gonna be able to move today. Am I MS? Yeah, it's a video uh, game day today. But you're like, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, I can't leave my game zone when I'm IMS. It's not even like a pain thing though. You're not like a chick where you're like, oh my stomach. You're just like, I'm grumpy. That's kind of what it is. Yeah. Then, but that's what I'm saying earlier. I go, but if the chick leaves, you go feeling better. I don't get what your point you're, bug- you're making here. Because it's just bugging you. Yeah, it's bugging you. No, she's bugging you. That's why you're irritable. Oh, yeah, I see what you're it's saying. It's the chick that's making you irritable. Irritable, <laughs> yeah, right? Okay, now so, I'm getting your point. Right? And so then you get rid of it. She's like, oh, it's your testosterone. You're like, yeah, well, you know what would fucking amp up my <laughs> testosterone? If you fucking scram a Rooney. Skedaddle. All of a sudden, the IMF goes away. Yeah, all, all of a sudden, you get on Xbox Live playing with the boys, a little COD in the IMS. Oh, Danny doesn't want to use the IMS. I'm going to be on that, man. I'm like, <laughs> imagine the first time you said that to a chick. She's like, shut the fuck Especially up. Especially if she didn't know about this she's like. Please just stop. Please like, stop. I, I, uh, what is it? <laughs> I, I read it on uh, your tango. Your what the fuck is your tango? <laughs> yeah. 
Like you get some chick you met in like the Bronx. <laughs> You're out here trying to pitch this bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? White boy singing about your tango? <laughs> what the fuck is your tango? Hey, your tango? You dancing with people without me? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, so I just got back from Newfoundland and it was a blast, dude. And we yeah. sold out the two shows with two Fuck days' yeah. notice. I want to say Toronto and Vancouver, those tickets are moving. Toronto's more than half sold out. It's only been like get a couple of days. Yeah, so you honestly want to get those tickets because that show will sell out. And I don't think I add another one. I've never not sold a show out in Toronto in like three years. You're keep that streak going. It's the biggest venue. It's like 1,200 seats or whatever. And it's already like half sold out. So honestly, if you listen to this podcast, go buy those tickets. I'm telling you, RyanLongComedy.com to get, get the on that. You know what I'm saying? But Newfoundland just want to do a quick thing. So this is the the boys over there are fun. The buys. That's what they go. They go the buys. The buys. Yeah. So you go to these small towns. They're Did ripping. You get screeched in. You get to get, so Did tell they them that screeched in. We have to do the shot and kiss the fish. We half got screeched in. We drank the screech. We didn't do all the. Why well, you just thing. got blown by the fish? Well, no, we <laughs> just turn drank. around, run dicks in the fish. You go, yo, fucking New York City slickers, come up here and face fuck our fish. No, I had sex on camera and like Dustin Diamond. <laughs> sex on camera. Dustin Diamond. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> so screeches, they make you drink this weird ass screech shit, and then you're supposed to kiss a fish, and they call it getting screeched in or something like that. And while you drank it, but wouldn't kiss the, kiss the fish? No, there was no fish involved. They just brought us some screech. People recognized me, so all the bartenders kept bringing shots and stuff like that. It's <laughs> big, <laughs> big down there. But they didn't have the no fish. No one comes around there. It's me and Joel Plaskett. Yeah. It's the only Joel guy. Plaskett's and then the guy from, you know, Great Big C. Yeah. So yeah, that course. guy's there. It's like every, every corner, that guy's playing a show, basically. Really? He has a show every three days it feels like <laughs> and they, they, people know where his house is and stuff like that they go oh that's the great big sea house the best slang is they go oh you getting at him tonight so they go getting at him every song sounds like this eyes the buys the time yeah, the buys the time the buys the time it's all times the buys the friends and buys and time the time the time you can make every every song that they ever have from those like east coasty sort of places you can make in 15 seconds yeah they're in no hurry over there it's by the way it's all pirate music it's all every song is the ants go marching two by two <laughs> that's literally legitimately yeah. they're Entire catalog of music is the ants go marching. The buys, the buys, the buys. So it's that over and over again, and then yeah, a couple little pirate jingles with different names, right? Yeah. I've never seen a different. I've never seen a place where servers give less of a shit about doing their job. And never, there's nothing worse than the servers that come out there and they like try to memorize an order with four or five people. These gr these girls wouldn't touch a notepad with a gun to their head. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they come yeah. up there, f five people, and we go, just pull out the pad. And she's like, no, I got this. And then 45 minutes later, you go, the I remember one time the girl comes in. She goes, uh, can I help you guys with anything? And we go, just the water. She goes, okay, just no big deal. I got five tables. So I go, then what, why'd you come over here? It's been <laughs> half an hour. You didn't bring us the water. What you go, just checking to see if you're fine. You go, well, no, we're not. You haven't brought us anything. It's been half an hour. And she goes, well, we got a lot going on here. And then <laughs> she comes. She brings the wrong meal for three out of five people, right? Not bad. Three out of five people. And not... Not like close. We're talking like someone orders fish and chips. She brings them shepherd's pie. Like yeah, we're not yeah, talking yeah. like even in the category. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then she, every time they go, oh, sorry about that. She goes, well, will that do you? And you go, no, I'll take what I ordered. And oh, then, they were trying to just be like, why don't you just... <laughs> you get what you get over there, just, right? They're just like, you <laughs> difficult city people. They're huh? actually, <laughs> that's definitely the vibe. <laughs> they couldn't fathom that we actually want what we ordered, right? And then th they'd come back 20 minutes later and then be like, yeah, ever, how's everything tasting? And you go, well, we haven't touched it because you said you were going to bring us our actual order, remember? And then she goes, oh, yeah, you're still fixing for that? You want? Fi you go, yeah, we're still <laughs> fixing for what we ordered. It's like just even getting what you ordered is like a you know nightmare, right? Ugh. So as a, one funny thing is that it's, uh, <laughs> there's some black bros over there in the crew, and then uh, the way they're talking to the big girls, and we're saying they're the the Kaplan because the Kaplan bringing the whales. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you were saying the black guys saying they're the Kaplan. <laughs> they, that's the fish that comes in, and then the whales tracks. Oh, okay, yeah. You got a black guy in the crew. All of a sudden, the whales start <laughs> popping around. <laughs> saying the black bros are the Kaplans. <laughs> That was good. Then uh, calling you know, call, the call girls chum dumpsters. Chum dumpsters. It's <laughs> very East Coast. Oh, the girls are real. Girls are real chum dumpsters. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> there's another thing too. We yeah, actually like, because we had like big crews or whatever. And then there's these two girls that uh, like came over and they're just sort of like doing shots with the table or whatever. And then we kept saying the cougars. <laughs> the girls are like two years younger than us. <laughs> It's like, okay, I mean, I'm two years younger than you guys. Like, the cougs are over here. The we don't make the rules, lady. <laughs> Apologize. 
they're all gone girls rules are, called, are rules the, coo- the coogs are out and about a couple <laughs> years younger than you awesome. that was doing me another thing we were liking is uh with people that were trans and not trans because like uh there's uh, some of that is that st- how they classify them over there no we're saying trans it's, and not trans no it's stock parts or not <laughs> <laughs> so a girl would come and you go you think that one's got the stock parts or not <laughs> So there's a lot of trans people with PEI. Yeah, because it's sort of hit, and some of them have. Yes, yeah, it's like so the entire like art scene, like everyone's trans. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it has had, but they didn't really. They don't do it that well, right? That's mostly. It's mostly like a, you know, a dude in a tube top kind of thing and long hair. <laughs> But you see that yeah. they're sort of going with not them. Pa- again. Not quite passing. They weren't passing. They're doing right? the lazy. Move. But it's good. It's a good way to refer to it when you're just like wondering. It's like you think that is. You go stock or not? <laughs> stock part. He's like, oh, this was went home with this girl last night. Stock. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a fun one that I was doing. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, we we're saying we we're just. Lo- lo- I was loving the idea of like the this is going to be tough for me to <laughs> put into a bit mm. but i was just loving the idea of like because every time it's just like one guy sort of in the corner playing i use the boy use the boy use the boy and then we're saying like if you just uh one guy that's just like you don't really listen to the lyrics and you finally realize he's singing a song about having sex with the fattest girl ever <laughs> and everyone's kind of just like wait what and he's just like she was a hundred she was a kilogram she was a hundred kilograms if she was an inch and, about, and then everyone's like what was that and she goes and she's right here at the back call the bar amanda amanda the biggest girl i <laughs> you know what I mean? Just slowly being like, who is this a singer? You know what I mean? And the guy He's starts like, playing in the fiddle. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wish it was a natural disaster because there was nothing natural about that. <laughs> and then sorry, starts having sex. He was, she was an IQ of forty. And they're like, is this guy singing a song about having sex with a retarded chick? <laughs> She had a 40 IQ if it was at one point. Just like the one guy that just like all his songs are the most heinous shit. But it's, but it's sort of faint in the background yeah, so no yeah. one really picks up on it. <laughs> so that was pretty funny to me. That was most of my stuff. And then probably the last thing that was making me laugh was, no, you like strip clubs won't let you have track pants. Yeah. Inventing a, a pant that's jeans, but it just has one, <laughs> it just has one square of track pants around the crotch, like sewn in. Yeah. Like you know how they have um, chaps or whatever. Yeah. So basically, it sews in one square of track pants around the crotch area, and they're called gentlemen's drawers. Do you think that would be a good? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Are they on the outside? Or well, the, the reason you can't have track pants is because if you get hard or whatever, the girls gonna be touching your hard oh, dick or whatever. Oh, that's the. I thought that was just like we're a classy establishment, no track. Well, pants. I think that's how they say it, but I think the reason they don't want it is because guys dicks would be flopping around in the track oh. pants. Oh. Uh, I'll pass on that. Product. You don't want to wear gentlemen's drawers. <laughs> There's just one square of like very thin fabric. It's like a totally different, but it looks the same. It's like how they sew it into the jeans. It's like for jeggings. Cowboys. You're talking about jeggings, <laughs> I think, right? I think that exists. It's called jeggings. I'm taking this to the dragon's den. I'll tell you that much. Of the Dude, shark you tank. just want to wear jeggings. Literally looks like jeans made out of like. No, of it's leggings. one square or in the middle. I'm saying jeggings are the whole thing. I don't want but jeggings, they, but they look like. <laughs> You heard it here first, everyone. I don't want to wear jeggings. I don't want to wear jeggings. I don't want to wear jeggings. <laughs> we got to tell the fellas right now about Gooder. I cannot. I actually cannot. Yeah, okay, we do. DP's got them on. Bona, I got five bona, pairs. Bona. Yeah. I was wearing them all the time in Newfoundland. It's like the. It is the best They're thing. Great. They, it's a thing that I've thought should exist forever. Because a lot of times it's hard to find the good inexpensive ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. So these are just a hot deal. You can pop. You go and buy five pairs and then just not think about it again for the oh, rest of the great. summer. And you just have always different ones to kind of pick from. They make $25 active sunglasses that don't slip, don't bounce, and are 100% polarized. I was telling people about it, not even on the boys cast stuff. Just being like, I'm telling you, get yeah. one of these. And I brought three pairs and I was handing them around too. Yeah. Couldn't recommend them more. So I think... I think everyone who listens to the boys cast would like to crank a few of these lightweight and comfortable stylish if you're active you're running they don't slip and bounce easy to clean stylish sunny starting at 25 dollars a pair one year warranty 30 day free returns 100 percent satisfaction guarantee danny's got the whiskey shots with satan on right now yeah i do they have a lot of really good names too yeah. so if you go to the website they name them very solid yep they look great i've heard of the gooder ones but i only seen them when i bought them somewhere i didn't know about the website where you just go go and like crank out the pairs yeah and it's all there's because there's a lot of times i'll have like a one favorite one that i like but it's sort of there's the variations of it where it actually will have the like five different ones where it's all kind of the one i like yeah so you never it's not the one where you end up with one slightly off what you actually wanted you know what i mean they're lightweight i love how comfortable they are 
and you can wear them all day. They've got ones that are darker shades. They've got ones that are lighter shades. They're always releasing new colors and collabs, so you can uh, lay low or get wild. Ginger Soul, uh, $9 pour over, Donkey Goggles. These are all kind of the yeah. names that they have. They're lightweight, stylish. They don't slip off your face. Fit perfectly under a hat. From exercise to errands to sunset, you got to get gooder if you want to support the show pick up a pair gooder is giving the boys cast listeners free shipping on your first order i threw in the link to the show notes and you'll see me sporting them on socials as well you can go to gooder.com slash boys cast and use the code boys cast to get free shipping gooder offers 30 day money back guarantee 100 percent satisfaction find your pair at gooder.com slash boys cast and use the code boys cast for free shipping next we got to tell the fellas about fit bod so me and danny have both been in the gym we've been out there and i've been on tour like crazy so i've been in different gyms too i've been basically on my system is i've been running uh every day and then two to three days a week i've been working out getting in the gym yeah i've been on circuits that's what i've started doing like the ones where you almost go like half an hour or whatever Mm. you know what i mean but the basically whatever gym you have they'll give you a customized plan football was the best because you know you can just it'll give you new exercises you wouldn't even think to do like for the muscle group that you're working on but it'll be like hey why don't you do it like this way and you're like oh i've never done that before yes exactly yeah it's really good hey listen you're not the same person you were at the start of the year so it's natural for your fitness journey to have ups and downs whatever your fitness level or whatever your goals are fitbod builds a dynamic workout plan just for you and optimizes future workouts based on your personal progress which is what danny's been talking about technology has replaced a lot of old formats you know what i mean and fitbod's got ai technology and it is hot your goals are always changing over time actually you've lost like probably eight to ten pounds too Mm. right so you're sort of your your goals are always changing so the app will help you adjust with that fitbod creates custom workouts based on your personal goals experience available equipment and more build your fitness habit and stay consistent all summer long fitbod's powerful technology understands your strength training ability studies your past workouts and adapts your available gym equipment also watching the arnold docs but got me hyped up i went to the gym here before we got here oh really oh and the arnold doc gets you into it man <laughs> he's saying that if people were telling him the one thing he wasn't good at at first is he needed to work on his calf yeah so that all the other guys that were like that that was the biggest thing the one guy told them he's like your calves are too small they keep your gym sessions fresh and fun by mixing up your workouts keep track of your achievements personal bests and fitbod's progress tracking charts learn new movements the right way with over 1400 exercise demonstration videos so wherever you are in your fitness journey get the most out of every workout with fitbod so you get 20 percent off your subscription at fitbod.me slash boys cast that's f-i-t B-O-D dot M-E slash boys cast. So Jonah Hill, I honestly hated Jonah. the fact that our podcast was, you know, comes out on Friday this week because I was like, almost was ready to do an emergency podcast, but I just got back yeah. Tuesday and it was like, it was going to be too not on, not in the cards or whatever. No. But so this is, I've heard every bad take in the book, right? Yeah. It was a. It was a real referendum on like what's acceptable and what's not. And you'd probably have, you know, you kind of have the two different types of people. You have the, you know, the liberal kind of take or you want, let's say, I'll say girl guy probably take, but then it was more like girl conservative. It yeah. was like the girl take was kind of for the most part, just like this guy's a monster. The girl's right. I can't believe he did this. Right. And their probably big pitch was that the pictures that he was trying to t- tell her to take down, in my opinion, he w- w- they weren't that crazy. Right. Yeah, I agree. So he was kind of like these pictures got to come down and they, she surfs and they weren't that crazy. And they were using that one piece of evidence to, you know. Yeah, and, and I'd just like case. to add that there's a lot of the story. Thank you. We, we There's a hundred pieces to the story. We've seen two of them. That is correct. And yeah. then the conservative take was a little bit like, yeah, that's right. Girls shouldn't be thoughts. And he was putting down his boundaries, right? Sure. So to start out, you have to sort of put it together a little bit what we're actually dealing with because a lot of you know you have to sort of put the pieces together for you're dealing with like jonah hill is the type of guy that's going wearing matching outfits with his girlfriend you know what yeah. i mean they're wearing matching stuff to the premieres he's going all in within two seconds you know what i mean yeah he's, he's a, yes and also posting every last feminist thing boy he's an emo boy that's what always kills you though is the moment that you're like the super feminist guy you really all paint yourself into a corner it's like dude your best friend is leonardo dicaprio like <laughs> 
come on. <laughs> and he's posting every last little thing you can post yeah. about how, you know, women, men need to step aside and blah, blah, blah. And you know what I mean? And and all that stuff. And then on yeah. top of that, you do have to take into account on their side, the girl's side, that he does have a lot of the, like, used to be fat insecurity stuff sure. in him. You know what I mean? And that just is a fact. Yeah. So those are just like the facts of the case going into it, right? Mm -hmm. Then you sort of come out the other side, and then where you start with, okay, you, that's the stuff that was going on with him. Like, this is an insecure guy, also a billionaire, you know, also a multimillionaire, also, you know, A-list actor, all that sort yeah, of stuff, right? As A-list as he gets. This girl is a clout demon. That's yeah. a fact. Anyone who's ever dated sort of like a surfy type girl that's that sort of deal... And especially, this guy's in his 30s. He dating a girl. She's 24 years old or whatever. Partying every day with the ex-boyfriends. It's like, and a lot of what's going on is that guys get into a situation. He basically tried to make like a hoa housewife. You know yeah. what I mean? And sometimes that works because sometimes, especially when you're offering the deal of like, listen, yeah, I, I don't want you fucking out with the ex-boyfriends and all this stuff. But also, because you're, you know, trying to be a, you know, trying to be an influencer and, a, you know, you want clout and all that stuff. I'm going to make your life better because I'm going to actually make you more money and I'm going to make you more clout. Yeah. So you're the deal I'm offering you is not like, I'm not giving you the like, I work at the hardware store and I want you to stop doing everything. Sure. This guy's like, you're looking for clout. You want to be doing all this stuff. You don't have to do that anymore. You got the Jonah Hill deal coming right at you. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's a good deal. Also, do we have to pretend like no woman has ever made demands of some guy? If a girl, like, that never oh my came God. up once. I that, like, couldn't agree more. Well, women have never been like, hey, it's like, if we're going to be together, like, this is the deal. You got to like post me in your Preach. shit. You got to like do all this stuff you i don't like jeff like i don't want Aside you hanging around with this guy like how many guys get a girlfriend you fucking never hear from him again they go in the witness protection program <laughs> <laughs> you're like what happened to them you're like got a girlfriend jehovah's witness protection <laughs> yeah, program. It's just totally i'll tell you yeah, they're, they're that never came up. That was like never. I was like reading all the discourse. This, First none of the discourse was like women do this all the time. And it's yes, it's called it's a everything is like setting boundaries and knowing your worth when a girl does it. And when a guy does it, he's a toxic abuser. Yeah, it's literally. And yeah. then, so, yes, this is the for sure a huge part of it that I couldn't agree more with that. And on top of that. You kind of have a situation where he basically was trying to, you know, make this into like a housewife or whatever. And on the topic of what you're saying, that idea that it's always bad, it's not always bad. Like there's a million people that were like, let's say we knew, right? Yeah. They were kind of like doing comedy, drinking every day, doing drugs every day. And then they sort of date a girl that has a good job. And she was like, listen, I want you to quit this stuff and get your life together. And then you see that guy five years later, his life was way better than if oh, he had still been. Oh, for sure. So it's like, it's not always worse to, you know, if someone's like a high status individual and they're sort of like telling you they want to bring you up. Of course. And only that, like that chick is obviously of the you know the f the feminist camp of like you don't tell me what to do and is it very I'm not to be told what to do like women have been told what to do for yeah uh, for time immemorial i'm not gonna be told what to do like if i was jonah hill this is my whole this is my negotiating tactic i go okay these are the things i want you to do she goes i don't want to he goes okay hold on pulls out a phone opens up instagram goes to the unread messages <laughs> folder I go have a peek what's going on in here right now, okay? Just just go through And then we're gonna do my bank account next. Yeah, yeah, we'll do my bank account next, but just go through my unread messages. <laughs> just see what's going on in here. <laughs> Take and a then me. let me know if we could maybe just have you remove a few <laughs> pictures from Instagram if that works for you. And then next year we can go to the fucking Oscars. How does that sound? <laughs> Danny's preaching right now. Well, <laughs> oh, man, I'm at the very on point commentary. I don't know. It seems pretty reasonable, no? Of course it seems reasonable. This is the thing, right? It's not really relevant whether it's reasonable that much a lot of times, right? Because this is, this is where... Let me backtrack a little bit. This is where Jonah Hill screwed up from a straight up, like, he don't know how to date... He's, like, bad at women, sort of, and that comes from probably, like... You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. He's, like... he. If you're smart and you start dating a 20, you know, 20 girl that's way younger than you, she's a party girl. She's out every night. She's in the like clout chasing. You I don't know, even part know if this girl life. was like a party girl though. She, oh, though, because a big part, I know surf culture. You yeah. can't read between the lines, buddy. <laughs> you know what surf culture means? I know. Ex Dude, I've, I've dated like the surfers, skateboarders, snowboarder chicks, like yeah. types. You know what I mean? Yeah, like the, the whistler. I, 100%. Yeah, yeah. I got no beef with it. But the problem is if you're like, 
you know, working 70 hours a week, going on, working on movies, or you're busy and not, if, you, if you're past that stage in your life where you're partying three, four nights a week, you don't really want it that much around you, right? Yeah. So what you do, obviously, is you sort of, you start dating that girl a bit, and then it's like, you don't make her your girlfriend, and if she wants to be your girlfriend, then you're kind of like, yeah, yeah, I mean, if we're going to be like together, together, like, um, this is what I'm wanting, but I'm also fine with this. Of course. The problem is he's like, wifed it up mad quick bringing her to the things you know putting the love bombing as they say putting the matching outfits on and yeah. then afterwards he's like here's a list of demands she's like well i already have everything i want you got no bargaining chips yeah, pal yeah, yeah that's a good point he has no bargaining chips what you say is just like you don't you don't move all you don't give away every last chip you have with nothing in return you kind of need to, it's a negotiation of how your relationship well, i will say work. that the one thing that he did well he brought that up before marriage, obviously, because that's when he'd be totally fucked and like in terms of, you know, losing half his that's money. All, that's all that was the last absolute, that was like last. the last thing he had. Well, it's but, too late though, because he had three more years before he could have even probably thought about that shit. Well, apparently not, because he's got a new chick already knocked up. So Well, then there you go. Maybe yeah. he was thinking about that stuff. And that's probably what a lot of guys do. And I think a lot of dudes, it's like when you're sort of saying, Don't post this, don't post this, all you're really saying is like, I don't like what's going on, and then you're trying to articulate it. So you're like, you know what I mean? Kind of a lot of times you're just like, I don't know, maybe like I, I don't want you posting all this shit like that all these ex boyfriends are doing. Like maybe don't be hanging out with your ex boyfriend. You're like trying to put a finger on yeah. what you don't like. I mean But really you're just like, This isn't working for me. Yeah, he's like, I don't like this and he's probably just like So maybe. you're trying to put a finger on it. Yeah, he's probably like, you know, I don't like it when Leonardo DiCaprio sends me screenshots blown up of your ass in a thong <laughs> and that's not my favorite thing. I can't probably articulate why I don't like that, but I Exactly. Don't, and, and I'm not that my guy. friends kinda like Yeah, and you're like I don't care. <laughs> I actually know. I actually don't have any problem whatsoever of dating girl that's like putting it out there i kind of like kind of like, i i don't yeah. know, i feel like it suits me almost yeah i mean it's <laughs> like for sure like some people are into that some people are not like just he's just like yeah, i'm not super into that i'm not into that and also i mean i don't ever think i've ever heard of him having a girlfriend period well i'm also the little if she's like out there and in the scene like so much the littlest thing could screw up his image too you know what i mean yeah like he has like a that's the thing too is like he has an actual like super public image to maintain so you're like at some point now you're the girlfriend like you're like an accessory to that image uh -huh. so you're like he's like this is the image i'm crafting so this is what i require simple as that yeah it's just like this is what i need of you i don't like want this is what i'm looking he's like for. you don't think i could get some like only fans like like you don't think i get literally like, i could get that again he's like easily. i can get a victoria's secret model like i have 20 in the wings like waiting if i if that's what i want he's like i don't want that and then there is another part if you were looking from a guy perspective on the image if you are kind of like you know was the fat kid that turned into like you know cool be pretty cool guy now especially when he gets skinny he's got all the tattoos or whatever but like he's still got that in him a lot of people probably sort of look at it if they see him and the girl seems like she's out with other guys and doing all this stuff and like it does a little bit people probably be like oh he's getting fucked like it's yeah. all like embarrassing is the word you use but you're just like and then i get if you're already insecure already you get extra insecure i've always said when you have like, and it's like you're embarrassing things though like this stuff it's not like oh people are your your friends are whispering it's like it's on the cover of people magazine sure being like your girlfriend is like Palling it up with some surfer She's on dudes some guy's Maui's. legs in the pool doing like a polo where yeah, she's doing like a piggyback. Yeah, and you're like, it's on the cover of like websites and stuff. You're just like, it's different. It's not like you, he's... This life's to, a little different. Yeah, we're trying to act like he's just like some normal dude who works at the Ford plant who's like telling his girl like how to behave. You're like, no, it's not the same thing. But you are, he is sort of right. It, not that what he said. I'm just saying like, because if you're a guy that is like sort of insecure and whatever, what happens is you sort of just let it bubble and then at the end of it, you go, I'm, that's it. I'm putting my foot down. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas what you need is someone that's not taking advantage of you so because if you have someone that's like taking advantage of you then you're always freaking on guard you need to like have someone that you like really trust so when you don't have that so it's like he you end up just sort of always like what's this what's yeah this? and it's I, not a good match no it's not a good match no and again they were in couples therapy it's just i don't know it's, so then and then also she just pulled the ultimate scumbag move because you're just like, like now let's talk what about what is that. this for oh it's, she's a clout demon that's what i'm saying but you're just like but she's obviously not in her mind being like i'm a clout demon in her mind she's like uh i'm trying to what warn women like she and she's like i waited till the the baby was born just because i didn't want to put all this stress like i'm sure like this new mother is like yeah this is great now this is awesome I love point this. in case like this is the kind of thing where you go if i was with a girl that was like all that sort of stuff and i'm like i don't know you just seem like the type of girl that's like a liability and then like a year later it does that it's like yeah, yeah well i guess i was right that you're like a liability for sure <clears throat> but 
There's and just pulled like I mean that's like jilted lover stuff to go post all these like text private text messages like she obviously has a sore spot over this whole thing. You know what you're point. you're talking about, uh, but not every girl would do that. I'm like, not saying every girl. No, I would never. No, do that. most girls would not do that. I'm saying she f- <clears throat> feels like specifically very wronged. The fact that He's like a dork. Yeah, but also the fact that like he <laughs> found a new girl pretty quickly, knocked her up, like had a kid. Like she's probably like that could have been that should have been me. Yeah, he was he probably already knew. It's like a lot of times you're with someone, it's like you're just like, I already know this is not the one. You're just like, I'll throw one Hail Mary. Hey, here's my list of things I want or whatever. <laughs> pretty reasonable. But people always like, say this is where the girl take that was driving me crazy. It was like, we should have just broken up with her. And it was like, Yeah, in a perfect world, she should have been like I guess when she started seeing signs of controlling and doesn't like it, could have should have broke up with him. And when he started seeing the shit he didn't like, he should have broke up with her. It's like, well, unfortunately, people don't always work yeah, like it. Was like it works. Ho- the most holier yeah. than thou take of also, all. Also, that's like hindsight is twenty twenty. Sure, like I'm sure you have to do that five times and then six time you catch it early. Yeah, like I'm sure when you wake up and you're tied to your fucking bed and your chick's holding a <laughs> sledgehammer about to crush your feet, you're like, probably should have taken that sign four years ago and broken up with her. Anyways. <laughs> People have a very whole year out there out that attitude. I mean, it's armchair quarterbacking right here. I know. It's like, yeah, obviously. But, but they only do it one way, though, because they. I've heard so many people being like, well, Jonah Hill like should have broke up with her instead of doing this stuff. And it was like, and she, yes, and her too. Like, yeah. It, it was like, it really is they can't decide whether they have agency or not. Yeah. Do you think he made her give, I wouldn't, give back the That's why I was arguing with women sometimes, and they're like, well, you wouldn't do stuff like that. And I go, no, I wouldn't. That's correct. Yeah. I w- like, but everyone's not vegan. That's not the standard of, like, you no, know what I mean? For sure. Yeah. You like, I mean, head on over to Saudi Arabia, see how they feel about uh, posting photos. <laughs> yeah. Or having Instagram. Exactly. Period. No, but no. yeah, there is. And then on top of it, I don't want to totally say he's off the hook or whatever, because it's like, he is like, he is the biggest, that, that is the perfect hypocr- hypocrisy on his part, being like, women should be allowed to do it every once. And in his personal life, it's like literally liberal in the sheets, or liberal in the streets, conservative in the Dude, sheets. Dude, like imagine like Leonardo DiCaprio texts came out like that. People were like, and? <laughs> Fucking gives a shit. Nobody cares. <laughs> Right. If you're just like, no men should ever tell a woman what to do. It's like, if you're if you want to preach the women bullshit, it's like, well, I guess live the women's like, he, life. Yeah, like literally, it's like never tell your girl anything to do ever. It's like nothing's off limits. Like, so go have a, a a naked pool party with your boyfriends, and you shouldn't be so insecure about it. Yeah, it's like literally understood that Leonardo DiCaprio just breaks up with you once you turn like 24. <laughs> and that's just like understood, and we're fine with it because that's you know again those are his boundaries, his text messages. <laughs> He goes, look, this is what I need from you. Don't be 25. Don't be 25. (laughs) This is what I need from you for this relationship to work. (laughs) Be under 25. (laughs) All this stuff's been coming out of the woodwork, too. They're trying to meet to him and shit now. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I saw that. So it always goes. I actually watched the Arnold doc. Yeah, I haven't seen it as good. Fuck it. I just love him, man. Yeah, He's the friggin' best. But it's like, I just, there's, he's, he's so, um, he talks about how great he is, like mostly, and it's like amazing. Like he's just like, you know, and I knew that no one was gonna beat me, blah blah. And he, the things that he did bad, he like he grazes over them. So like he's just like, even when he's like, I basically cheated at the competition. I told the guy it was over, so he left stage. It was just a little prank. He was like, he was really pissed off. Never talked to me again. <laughs> but you know, that's kind of fun stuff I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He does these things. <laughs> he's just so. I think he does live in that world. It's like pathological about winning stuff. You're like, I, I it's love like Kobe him. Bryant being like, yeah, when I was like at the free throw line, I tied his shoes together. And then yeah, it's kind of that. Like, tripped and broke his ankle, never played again. But you know, game's a game. No, it really is. It really is great stuff. And it's like, he very much grazes over like the, how he's just, uh, just like smashing nonstop or whatever. But the interesting thing was he, when he was running for governor, he had like a ton of groping girls on set allegations and all this stuff. And he just basically was like, I don't know. I didn't do that. But like, yeah, I maybe acted inappropriately. Sorry. And it just kind of like oh, a different went era. away. Totally that's different. all I was, that's, that's my whole point is yeah. kind of all I was thinking at the time was just like, can you imagine like, I mean, Louis was the last apology. That was the last where people go, okay, that makes it I mean, worse. Trump had grabbing by the pussy. He dodged that. But that's, that's, that's why though yeah, yeah. it's because back in those days like people wanted accountability now they want blood yeah, so not, it's like yeah, they say they want accountability want but they want blood no, yeah, so apologizing doesn't help it makes it worse because then all it does is forever that they get to go yeah he even admitted it of course that's yeah. all that happens yeah yeah and if you don't admit it then it's even worse because they're gonna they're gonna get you either way yeah it was an interesting it was an interesting time for that but yeah when but a yeah, girl it's like someone jacked up with that much testosterone you gotta assume they're they're getting in there 
Right. That's, that's so. That, I think everyone was man. wrong about a lot of stuff. Jonah Hill. At the end of the day, I think the biggest takeaway is kind of what you you were your main point, which I agree with, is like when a girl does it, it's standard. Is when a guy does it, it's yeah, emotional abuse. Of course, happens all the time. But at the end of the day, Whatever. if the guy and then my second biggest thing is if you're gonna freaking try to make like a party girl a housewife, you gotta you gotta do it incrementally. You can't just go all in and then try to get your way and claw your way out of the scenario that you hate. You have to you have to sort of boil the frog out of the party life. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> but I don't think like he's he does not really he's not gonna be negatively affected by this because I think most normal people are like yeah that's the, like most normal people I don't think think that that's that crazy. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a lot of people that do. Some people do. Yeah, and it sort of puts you in the. It just puts you in the scope now. For like how many guys are like, oh wow, that was really. <laughs> it's like a, a you know a subsection of women. The, the really women like. lobby strong though. You're yeah, right, though. I agree. <laughs> I was like in the. Uh, I told you I, I like like Patrick V. David. Like he just makes me laugh so much. Yeah. But he's doing. I don't think I told you this, but it's just one thing that I have not. Just think, speaking of you know big famous people, this quote that I have not got out of my head. They were doing like a, an episode, and he was basically the other guy was like you know. Uh, you always got to you're just talking about being great and he was like you know you want to compare yourself to your people your own age you know what I mean like you're your age like you shouldn't be comparing yourself to like a Grant Cardone you should be comparing yourself to people your age you know what I mean and if you're doing this like you want to compare yourself to this like yourself seven years ago and then Patrick David's like hey let's just stop for a second I, see, th this example you're saying is really weird you're saying that I compare myself to Grant Cardone he goes <laughs> no I'm just saying like that's you know an example of what you wouldn't he goes yeah except I've never compared myself to Grant Cardone <laughs> so <laughs> I like, couldn't get off of Dude, it. Dude, I swear the co-host was like, no, it's a hypothetical. I'm not saying you do. He goes, yeah, well, I don't. So he goes, I don't know what point you're trying to make about me comparing myself to Grant Cardone. And he like, <laughs> he like couldn't. It was, I was like on like the plane. Like, you're like, are you guys going to have to cut? Like, you want to edit this out or something? He was, it's like he, and the guy was just like, I'm just saying hypothetically. Yeah, exactly. Because you do it right and you shouldn't. He's like, yeah, and I wouldn't. So, <laughs> <laughs> I love dude, he's like fucking the best. That's funny. <laughs> he's just so like matter of fact. Yeah, yeah, he's very matter of fact. That he can't like get in the hypothetical realm almost, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of autism, I think. Yeah. So super serious, just like can't understand this comparison. He goes, I don't understand. Couldn't agree. Yeah. Here's my other uh point is that meta is that one buddy that buys the same clothes as you as acts like it's normal? <laughs> like if you just showed up with the exact same shoes as me and you're like, what? I don't know. Yeah, we both have them. It's like we'll wear them on different days. <laughs> oh, you have those? And you're just like, yo, that's not okay. That's, that's what Meta does with every other thing. Because first they copied YouTube by trying to add new videos and they tried to make it like, you know, the in, in Yeah, I remember the ads. IGTV. That was on no Facebook first. Then they copy that on IGTV. Then face. And then they then they go to Instagram and then they just buy it. Then Instagram just copies TikTok all in all. Then Facebook starts copying TikTok and then they just open a new one to copy Twitter. It's like they've never met a social media platform that they couldn't completely jack. Yeah, I mean Threads. The fact that it has a hundred million people on it already is impressive, but it sucks. Mm -hmm. It really sucks. I, I was really like when it had well, when it came out thing. and I was like. Tell me I don't have another thing I gotta Kinda use, that too. please. And then I think after three days, I was like, "Fuck, pretty sick that I have like no compulsion to go in there and check it." Really? Well, the only way I would use it you is if search. I had, like, you know, the only way I would use it if I had an app that just like posts from Twitter to Meta. So it's or, of course to Threads. You go, I just post on Twitter, and if it wants to go on the Threads, then it goes on. Threads. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I won't even open it. You do whatever you want there. I could be getting quote tweeted. I don't even care. I don't even know if they, you can do like there's I, I, like you can't search. There's no like you know searching by topic. Well, do you know what the big hype, the big kind of conspiracy hypothesis was? Obviously, it's to take you know to fight Elon Musk and yeah. trying to take that take that like Elon Musk is a mean guy uh, market space. Sure, but the other one was that uh, which isn't a conspiracy, but it's like they have. The biggest thing in their industry is like scraping data and selling data, especially for AI oh, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And none of those other, most of those other platforms are videos and pictures and stuff like that. So now they're kind of like, hey, this is, we're only letting words. So now we have all this like word data, which we can scrape. Well, they have and that's why, because remember they were scraping Twitter and Elon Musk was getting all mad about it. Oh, no, no, no. So the conspiracy that I, as I understood it, was that they basically had threads waiting to go. Then they went and started scraping Twitter like crazy in order to essentially 
make Twitter do their like rate limiting thing where they're like, we have to like th- put the brakes on Twitter to make Twitter look bad. And then as everybody's like, oh, look how shitty Twitter is right now. They're like, hey, everybody, here's threads. You but they were the ones it. doing the scraping <laughs> in order so to basically. Like, that's kneep- why they did yeah, it. Yeah, they like kneecapped Twitter temporarily so that they could like in- basically release. Because they had it right, ready to go, obviously. They just needed to find a point of weakness, essentially. So they're like, Interesting. yeah, that, that was the, which is possible. I don't think you can find out who is doing the scraping, but. Uh, they possible. just know they're getting scraped. They're getting scraped, yeah. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I don't know. But Thread sucks. It's, I mean, again, you can't like, it's just like, dude, all of Threads is, is Gillette being like, do you like antiperspirant or do you like deodorant kind of guy? <laughs> Drop your comment below and you're like, okay. <laughs> Definitely a lot of fucking ads <laughs> getting like, out there. It's like all that bullshit. Every like, brand's on there. It's all just like the the <clears throat> engagement, the type of engagement farming of just like asking questions like nobody gives a shit about just so like a lot of people answer. I hate that stuff. Kobe or Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> Drop the comment below. Who do you like? And then you're like, okay, what's uh, all right? Yeah, top five titties. Go. <laughs> yeah, and just, but it's from some. Like, I hate engagement farming. Oh, that shit's the worst. There's this dude in Canada. Dorkiest ass shit. Yeah, yeah. The, this guy who uh, engagement farming when you don't have that much engagement's even more sad. Yeah, but it's top five movies. Go <laughs> yeah. zero responses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not. Uh, I hate that shit. But anyways, we'll let's see. do a wacky parent article. Right. We're gonna t- we're gonna turn over gears here. You know what I'm saying? Because you know we love these. You know we all about the wacky parent articles at the boys cast. Mm, I like a good. <laughs> it's probably, it might be one of my favorite categories. <laughs> the like you know progressive dad moms. Mm-hmm. So this mom, basically, they're doing. Uh, they're very like sex positive household, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yuck. <laughs> I definitely, my household is very sex positive. It's just that my parents weren't freaking hearing about it. You know what I'm saying? The boys, <laughs> the boys were very sex positive. Yeah. We were having sex in their room whenever with, they left. With the with boys, other. just the dogs. No. Seven reasons your teen won't talk to you about sex or open up about their love lives. So this is a parent that's like, listen, there's a lot of parents out there. You were starting to realize I haven't talked to my son or daughter about who they've been boning, mm. which is obviously a problem. Sure. You know what sure. I mean? I ask my go out to my daughter. I go, how many dicks you take this year? Yeah. What are you doing to them? How deep? You know, you go on it. You get it. You hit in the back of the throat. What are we doing? Are we <laughs> an anal? F- and then the girl's like, mom, I don't want it. And she goes, well, this is some bullshit. Yeah. What? Just talk to your mom. <laughs> talk to me. About all the D's you're taking. <laughs> yeah. So if you're a parent out there and you're having trouble, you know, having like graphic sex conversations with your teenager. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here's here's seven ways that you can kind of see. This used to be like something where you how, go, how you can kind of lube up the topic. And that's just, how you lube up the topic and just kind of slide it. You know, in maybe there. you're not even the parent. Maybe you're a stepdad. You know, <laughs> maybe your da- the, the teenager's eighteen and you're the thirty year old stepdad. Maybe you're just a teacher at the school. Maybe you're just a teacher at the school. You know, the bus driver trying to get those <laughs> sex convos sparked. So the first reason that your teenagers might not want to talk to you about sex, they go, you haven't brought it up. You know, you just haven't talked about it. You maybe talked about the birds and the bees when you're in seventh grade, but you haven't talked about sex or sexuality since then. So a part of it is that like you might have gotten scratched the surface, but you haven't really like got to the nitty gritty. So your parent, the kids are sort of walking around being like, obviously, I would love to get into the details of, you know, who what and how sure but i just think you know my problem my parents are funny wish, daddies. they don't yeah, want to get into it yeah they probably just do it through a hole like, how big a load you doing you know where are you putting <laughs> the load your kids <laughs> received the message that you don't want to talk about it so, so there's a possibility so they're not even potentially starting with the idea of like yet hell no the kids obviously don't want anything to do with that yeah what kind course. of psychopath wants to talk to their mom and dad about sex when they're a literally teenager? just be like yo don't get pregnant don't get someone pregnant. That's it. I remember my buddy, his dad used to always say, fucking make sure you double wrap it. <laughs> I was we like, like always. It was this thing that he would always say. And it was like pretty well known at the time that that's not a good advice. You know what I mean? Double wrapping is not good advice? No, because it breaks. Uh, it's way more likely to break because they rub together, right? You know that. Uh, yeah, everyone knows that. Never, never double bagged it. Well, you do it I for never the girth. Even, never even single bagged it. <laughs> I'm a dog. <laughs> The Dorito rapper. <laughs> <laughs> Never even single bag. <laughs> that is funny. I have t- Imagine t- the kid like double bags and then gets a chick pregnant. He's yeah. Like, Dad. Nah. He goes, well, you should have tripled. I told you. So I got fun paying alimony, kid. Yeah. Just like your pops. 
So no, no kid probably wants to talk to them, but their thing is that there's kids walking around like freaking parents won't even talk, ask me about my sex life. You know what I mean? So yeah, I would say that that one's the first one. Probably not. Try something like, hey, I know I haven't talked to you much about my, your sexuality, but I want to start. That's a, that's a nightmare of a day, huh? See, I think, I think I would, what I would do is I would, if you're really into it, is I would plant like a, like a fleshlight or like a dildo or like a butt plug. Like, and then your son goes, what's this? And you go, funny you should ask. <laughs> yeah, see? You gotta just start the conversation. Got some just pamphlets like, here. It's <laughs> this little icebreaker, as they say. Hey, I'm gonna... Hey, come in here. This is, I'm gonna, let me, me and your dad are gonna show you something. It's something we've been working on. Oh, Open the, up to Nate, page 67 of the Kama Sutra. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna want to stretch first. You're gonna, those, you, are, those are some tough positions. Those you're are gonna want to stretch first. Very advanced positions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just grab my uh, stepping stool here. I gotta get up here to the bar. <laughs> Okay, son, uh, do you mind uh, help tying me into these ski boots? <laughs> you, and you clink the ski. <laughs> you basically have skis taped to the, the yeah, you ceiling. Got the, the, the zero gravity. Basically. Yeah, the zero gravity boots, basically. And then those are on the wall, and then you're sort of hanging down. <laughs> and, dad, and dad's on the stepping stool next. He goes, oh, I forgot to take my Viagra. And then he's like, I'm stuck. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> The blood's all going to my head. Son, it's an emergency. I need you to go into the top drawer of your room. That's where I left it. I assume you might want some too. Assume they might want to start. You go, listen, I'm, I, I want to start. This is something your mom and dad want. It might make me a little nervous because my parents didn't talk to me about it, but I'm not freaked out by sex and I'm not going to shame you. It's <laughs> like your dad sitting you down. Ugh. Listen, Danny. This is something we're talking about. Now, listen, I'm going to be a bit nervous. You might see your dad jittering. <laughs> this is something, not something my dad talked. This starts now. This is the generation that it starts. <laughs> we break the chains. <laughs> this is when we break the chains. <laughs> also, it feels nice if you uh, wrap a chain around your neck right before you're about to finish. It's, but don't do it unsupervised. <laughs> this is where we what break the to David chain. Carradine. <laughs> his dad <laughs> you, know, this, you know what happens is the kid goes his dad his kid goes here ah, help 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 he walks in he's naked jerking off with the belt he goes help and the kid walks in he goes dad he goes see that was just a lesson <laughs> <laughs> that's the type of things that could happen if you do this unsupervised <laughs> oh that's <was> funny <laughs> <laughs> nice little wholesome lesson right there. It's a wholesome lesson now. Now you try. <laughs> He's got the kids. He's got a maple leaves tie. <laughs> <laughs> Pop your tie in there. You haven't even tied me how to tie a knot yet. That's second. <laughs> <laughs> hey, one thing at a time, okay? No, you're teaching your kid how to tie a knot, but it's under the belt loop. Oh, yeah. That's how you teach your kid how to tie a tie. <laughs> Now listen, <laughs> I know I might be freaked out. I might say something like this. Ah! Don't let that stop you from getting into the details. Every last detail. Do not miss a drop. I want to know what's her name. The guy's like, Dad, I just, I fingered one girl. I'm fucking, I fingered one girl, I think. You know yeah, I'm mean? pretty sure. I don't know. <laughs> and the dad's like, which finger? Pull it out. Yeah. How many? One? You can ask me anything, and if I don't have a good answer, I'll find it for you. So the kid's like, "I have the internet." It, literally, know. what are you gonna? Your dad's like, "I'm. I don't know. I know nothing about sex. I'm not an expert." You're like, "How do I finish quick?" He's like, "One, do, do not move. How, like, dude, no, dude, don't move." Am I? I don't know if I'm just like so vanilla, but like, how much stuff is there to really know? <laughs> yeah. Like honestly, like. Oh, no, you're a good point. Yeah. How much stuff are we talking moves? about? Moves? Because the only thing there's really no, 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 no. you're moves. not. Tr yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's up to you, you and whatever. Like, I'm not talking about moves with my dad. Yeah, we're talking about procreation essentially. Like this is pretty straightforward stuff. This I'm not sure what they want you to talk about. That's you know, like what would the questions be? I mean, what is a teenager's question? Like, how do I stop busting so quick, Dad? And the dad's gonna be like. If I had the answer to that one, I wouldn't be with your mother. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I don't <laughs> double bag it. I, I don't, yeah. I'll tell you one thing. If, if, if I had the answer to that one, you wouldn't be here, son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I just don't understand how much stuff there is to be. Imparting. What are the questions? I don't know. Like, uh, how do you unzip pants? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I honestly like yeah don't do you face each lube, other like lube because the all you're right the only thing that yeah yeah lube, the only thing you could really be asking is like uh, positions yeah you're just like literally like hey this, this the this and you puck <laughs> just that's it's kind of what you do that's it that's that's literally all there is to it you go hey uh I don't know like what do I do if I can't get it up from nerves and your dad just like runs to the other room Siri what can I <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's gonna Google it if he doesn't have the answer. You know, yes, I don't know. Sometimes it happens. Hit the bricks, Dad. But again, you you're like, is there even an answer? There's not really good like answer. For, like if you're like, you know, is there? If your dad's gonna tell you old wives' tales, like picture your grandma. <laughs> You're you're like, how's that supposed to help? You're like, I can't get it up. Because reverse psychology. You can't get your dick up. You picture your grandma. You picture your mother. That's what I do. <laughs> if you're trying, to, what do you do if you're gonna buzz too quick? You go. What I do is I picture your mother. I suggest you do the same. So what? <laughs> well, I just look at your mother. If I'm coming, to, I stop imagining someone else, and then I cl- open my eyes and <laughs> look at your mother. So I suggest picturing your mother. Well, there you go. Solid advice. How long to eat for? I guess that's uh, like how long we munching for. Yeah, he's like, he's like, yeah I guess uh, I stopped munching maybe, a long time ago. Maybe like food you want to eat beforehand. You know, like like tips for uh, athletes. Like you know, you're gonna want to have some protein. This is all the stuff that like some like creepy adult said to you. Like that's trying to be cool. They go oh, pineapple in there, make it taste yeah. good. And you're like, get the fuck out of here, yeah, you like- creeper. Playing mini sticks. <laughs> It's just unnecessary. <laughs> seven. There's not seven. <laughs> Hanging around the skate park. You know what I mean? Telling you sex tips. Yeah. So definitely, I, I'm, I'm not interested personally in having those conversations. No. And then they go, um, another option, they say, watching t- and TV and movies together can be a great time to bring stuff up. Yeah. So For instance. Hardcore porn. Oh, if obviously the first thing. Yeah. You go. You, your mom just keeps picking movies with sex scenes. Have you have you ever watched a sex scene with your parent? Is the, obviously the most being incredibly embarrassing in yeah, the world. Yeah, that's the worst thing ever. I have the I I'll just up and leave. You know, I'm yeah, out of there. Yeah, I'll just, yeah. I'll just I'll tell me when it's done. The only way to handle it is to make it like funny, where you're just like, not doing this. Can yeah. you tell me when this is over, you perverts? <laughs> this is perverts putting on for you, us. Yeah. So when the kid gets up, the, your advice is you just grab them, and be like, sit down. <laughs> you watch. Do you have any questions? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like they're like, no, I think I'm good. You go, you need to have some questions. I don't know why you wouldn't have questions. So ask me. Ask me anything. You don't trust old Papa Bear? <laughs> and it's not even your dad. It's your mom, yeah. too. So your mom. And the mom's like a, by the way, like super progressive mom. Oh, of what she, oh. So it's like your mom. And she's a blogger. Exactly. So you're like, anything you say is going to be used against you in this form. Oh, like, one, you're going to be winding sure. up. Like, she's like, do you have any questions? And she's taking notes. You go, why are you taking notes if I'm asking you questions? <laughs> she got the recorder on. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, just just pretend this isn't here. <laughs> one of the top questions that you have about sex that's happening right now. Why are there three men? You go, <laughs> Interesting question. That's a video that I picked. I was hoping that you'd ask that. <laughs> Why? Is, I don't know. Why is why <laughs> she, a, she cuts her own sex scenes in with the dad and the mom? <laughs> why are you and mom in this movie? <laughs> That's the 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 eligible bachelors. What was it? The rich bachelors. My buddy's dad. The rich bachelors. My buddy's stepdad. I've said this story on the podcast before, but it was a while ago. My buddy's stepdad started acting. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got in trouble. And then basically he didn't tell his mom that he got a job as the spokesperson for (laughs) SugarDaddies.com. And she just fucking saw it on the TV. Wait, was he like in a hot tub or something? He's in a hot tub with a bunch of girls. This guy's a 60-year-old Indian man. (laughs) He's in a hot tub. It was six girls. This woman blew a fucking gasket. Yeah. She honestly wasn't putting it together that it was like the. Com- she's like she th- did wasn't putting it together that it was just an acting role either. You know what I mean? Oh, that's insane. <laughs> that's really crazy. She's like, not only are you freaking out here, you're rubbing it in my face. It's probably like that was the back. funniest thing. That of was all back. Time. That must have been a while ago, right? Oh, it was like twenty years ago. Yeah, that was in the days when they're like casting for this, and they go, you know who we need for a sugar daddy role? A sixty-year-old Indian man. Who do they have now? It would be, I don't know. It would be something like the opposite of probably what a sugar. I don't know. They would do like they'd be dancing around it. It would be probably a woman. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> like a fucking super hot woman. You go, this doesn't make any sense. And they go, yeah, we're not getting in trouble for it. But I think this one was pitching to the guys, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I just, they probably, that's who they think their target demographic is. It, it, it's like, probably complete, not that crazy far off. <laughs> please open. <laughs> please open. Please open, but locally. <laughs> yeah. Please open, but in person. Please open the hot tub. I know it's after hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then she goes, for instance, if a guy aggressively kisses a woman who tries pushing him away, share your thoughts and say, geez, this guy is aggressive. So her basically way is she wants to open up about sex, but she doesn't want to open up about sex. She wants to open up about, like, shouldn't do that. Consent and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, that's not the kind of questions that the kid has. Yeah, exactly. The dude, yeah, the girl has questions, probably. The guy has questions about, like, how do I get this? (laughs) Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys are just like, how do I make, how do I get rid of the demons inside of me? How do I make this happen for me? How do I, how do I do that? you know what yeah. I mean and the girl's gonna set you know and then the girls I don't know what her questions would be like friggin I don't know something stupid how long do I wait maybe yeah how do I know who's right how do I know who's, who's the one me? I don't know what girls friggin think and the mom's probably like you wanna just be a fucking huge whore <laughs> Yeah, you I'm not. Know, there's no such thing as the one. You just want to just get there's ran. The one and the, there's through. the one and two and three and the ten. <laughs> just get ran. And that's fucking this week. Yeah. You just say, hey, listen, there's nothing wrong with getting run through, you know? You know, your mom, before you met your dad, tried every other guy in the book, same night. <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's nothing wrong with uh, having sex with your stepbrother. <laughs> you're, not, you're not blood. It's it's It feels weird, but that's what yeah, makes so it Yeah, so mom's cool. going to give her just wacky-ass advice, you know what yeah. I mean? And the son, yeah, it's probably like, <clears throat> the son, she was like, you need to be careful. You get like everything. You do not. You know, you do not uh, make a move unless you have explicit permission. Daughter, take them all. Every, there's no... <laughs> you go, whoever you need, whenever you need, yeah. you get on that. Life is your oyster. <laughs> Men are palm horses, and it's your time to ride. <laughs> Save a horse, ride the, ride the hockey team. <laughs> Watching TV can be a break. Uh, great way to... Great way to talk about that. Yeah, so it's NPC, Mom. Two, you've shamed and judged others. So one of the reasons is she's saying that maybe your kids don't want to talk to you because you've been like, oh, that guy, look at that little slut. Yeah, yeah. And then what her suggestion is is that you apologize for that and then come back to the daughter and be like, listen, I noticed you haven't talked about banging lately. (laughs) I think it's because I called that girl a slut. just want to say she's not a slut. I was wrong. (laughs) So now that we've got that out of the way, yeah, tell, <laughs> tell me about your escapades. <laughs> now that we've gotten the, right yeah, of the way. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. She pours herself a drink, lights a cigarette. Okay, now yeah. go. <laughs> I'm not falling for this one. Yeah, let me know. So maybe she is, yeah. Um, then the daughter goes, uh, the dad's like, yeah, listen, listen, I might have said some other girls are sluts. I want you to tell daddy what you've been doing. She's like, I blew the whole hockey team. He goes, <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> what? You're going to fucking boarding school. <laughs> you said you wouldn't judge me. You're going to the monastery tomorrow. <laughs> There's one big hockey player that's from Newfoundland, and he he kicks around. Yeah. He like went back home, and he was I can't remember the guy's name, but he went back home, and he's like a big celebrity there, right? Yeah. And, and apparently, I think I know who you're, uh, the guy who like he's not he's retired, right? Oh fuck! I think he was in Letterkenny. He's Maybe like, he's like a big, yeah yeah. yeah I, I can't remember the guy's name, but yeah. basically Paul was saying that sometimes it would be like a girl, and someone would be like, "Oh, that girl you're talking to? Oh, she's so smashed, so and so. That hockey player smashed her." Yeah. But they're not saying it like they're not telling no, it's, you. It's like a badge on or yeah. They're yeah, not yeah. telling you the hockey player smashed it in a way to say like, "Well, just so you know, she's smashing all those guys." They're saying like, like "Good enough it, for yeah, him." Yeah, like, get in there. Yeah, it's like a big badge of uh, honor. Terry, that this Terry, guy. Ryan? that's who it is. Yeah, yeah Terry Ryan. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not Terry Ryan. No, it's know, Terry something. Terry something. I know you're talking about. <laughs> that is who it is. Yeah, yeah. And every he's a big badge of honor. It's yeah. kind of like Bubbles from Trailer Park Boys just moved to the East Coast or just lives in Halifax and he's just running through the chicks over there. Yeah. What's his name? It's definitely Terry something. Danny knew his Duny knew what he's talking about. Oh, I can't so remember. the other ones you've been too nosy in the past. So it's like you have to be just right if you want it. You can't be too nosy. You can't be too it's like if you want your kids to be telling you every last little detail about their sex lives, you gotta be just right. Just right. And then the last one, the kid just doesn't uh care about sex, they say, right? So you have to be you have to be just the right amount of nosy, right? So the first one you have to kind of be like, listen, they go, tell me who. He goes, listen, I don't need to know every last detail, but like, did he hit it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I want you to open up just as amount you want. And the last one, the kids might not be interested in sex yet, so it's like you've been asking them too young. So you have to check in like sort of every morning. <laughs> you just wake up, your mom's like right outside, you're right in your face with a pen and yeah. badge. He goes, yet? You have a wet dream yet? Huh? <laughs> Pitching a tent there, pal. 
quick second here to tell you about patreon.com slash the boys cast where there's a new bonus episode every week and we are also under 200 away from doing our next episode of our series bug man vs bug man and listen he also got a come see me on tour we got salt lake city coming up very soon july 21st new york city is very close to sold out september 16th at a theater tacoma vancouver kansas city omaha edmonton los angeles irvine san jose phoenix toronto so get those tickets quick Now, we would be doing a disservice to our listeners if we did not tell them about AG1, because this is something that I do every single day. Me too. It's the first thing I do when I wake up. I wake up, go to the bathroom, walk to the kitchen, make myself an AG1. I told you I've been popping uh, ice cubes in there, Oh yeah. mainly because my tap doesn't get cold enough as well. It's another factor. Yeah, it's a very problematic tap, but I don't like doing the fridge water thing. It's a whole thing. But AG1 is the first thing that I do every single morning. Sometimes, you know, taking all these pills and supplements and all this stuff, it's hard on your brain, man. Yeah, man. You got one, one thing. And it tastes good, too. Tastes great. Tropical taste. It's one of my, probably the favorite one of those kind of things that I've oh, tasted in my life. They nailed it. You heard Joe Rogan talking about it. You heard Tim Ferriss talking about it. You heard about AG1. It's hard for you to keep up with a supplement routine that comes with a bunch of different products. You know, so that's why you get one supplement who you can trust. And AG1 makes that so much easier. AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that delivers comprehensive nutrients to support the whole body health. Since I've been taking AG1, I've noticed an overall feeling of health. You got benefits like energy, support for mental clarity, improved digestion, and focus. AG1 helps build your health foundation first. We're always looking to upgrade the life. You know, you're looking for that little edge, you know? Mm -hmm. Before we know, we got other podcasts nipping. We got them nipping at us, you know? That's why we got to be on our game. Training. When they're training, we got to be on our game. That's why we get a new studio. That's why we're getting our health intact. Yeah. That's and then AG1 is a big part of that process. Every scoop's got 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, whole food sourced ingredients of high quality to give me major benefits like gut and mood support, boosted energy, and even healthier looking skin, hair, and nails. My AG1's delivered to me every month, so it can be super easy to make a daily habit. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D and free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Support the show. Go to drinkag1.com slash boyscast. That's drinkag1.com slash boyscast. Check it out. <laughs> Fucking dorks Ben and Jerry have been out at it again. Yeah, they have. Actually, this one was pretty funny, though, because they were basically saying that they got to give back Mount Rushmore to native land. Yeah. And then essentially uh, their Ben and Jerry headquarters is also on native land. And they're like, give back your Ben and Jerry headquarters. I mean, like, based on their logic, <clears throat> all land is native land. Yeah. I don't know. what. So the every is. production facility that Gen- Ben and Jerry's owns is on native land. It's all based on this premise. It's all on. These guys land. never met like a hot new, you know, social justice trend that they didn't love. No, there's man. nothing they couldn't sink their teeth right into immediately. These guys just sit on like every day, just finding a new thing that they go, oh, we can be aggressive, but we can be like yeah. oh, completely over the top about that one. Yeah, they don't like uh, Israel. <laughs> Not fans of the Israelis. Okay, so there's a bit of stuff in the affirmative action category. There's some funny shit, but one is there's this dude on Twitter. I don't think I've I don't think I sent you this actually. So you can see there's this guy. You probably saw this. It was just a huge thing. But yeah, Jay, yeah, 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 of course. Okay, of so course. this guy basically said serious question for well-meaning white people. When you show up at a get together like this, do you notice that there's no black people? If you do, do you say something to who? Please be honest. This is a safe space. Blah blah. blah unless you say something racist. So they're saying they're basically like do. Uh, uh, you know, like internet lunatics. They go to an event and there's not any black people there and they're like, what do we do? Sure. Do we call Especially one? When there like a Jennifer red- Aniston and Courtney Cox are there and I, the first thing you're thinking of when you show up is you go, there's no black people here. But their brains are fried, right? Of course. And they go, it could be like, it's even if it's like a family gathering, you know what I mean? It's like, they're. Uh, I think that what these people need is sort of like rent a black guy. Like that feels like a good service that black guys can rent. Like if you if you're like a progressive and you're like you want to seem cultured, 
Can they, but you don't know enough black people. You like can rent, you know, like rent a like minority. So mm. they come to your party and make it seem like you have, you know what I mean? <laughs> rent a minority. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Like kind of like. But as a, as a, in a social, like not obviously working there, like they have to pretend like, oh, I've known, like they have a whole backstory. That you exactly. Get like, so it's like yeah, rent a friend. college buddy. 100%. So you basically have these guys and they show up and they kind of uh, make it seem like. <laughs> yeah, me and old the Brickishaw go way back. <laughs> yeah, exactly right but the reason why it's funny is so this guy posted this and then the next day it basically people did a deep dive on this stuff and it said this guy yeah, basically yeah. lied about being black <laughs> to get into law school well he, uh, not only that he lied he did a fake hate crime too he faked a hate crime like 10 years ago <laughs> where he, he he was in when he was in school like in 2012 or something he uh basically reported that he was like uh, attacked for being black and then this guy's a real Sean King, eh? Yeah, and then the net maybe like uh, they investigated it, and then he eventually like admitted. He goes, "Yeah, nothing actually happened. I just did it to bring awareness to the stuff like that's where they happened. all say." Yeah, what percentage of hate crimes do you think are like uh, what do you call it? Red, uh, like know? fake? Yeah, but what's the word for the fake? Like when the government does a bombing on their own citizen or whatever. Oh, uh, <clears throat> false, false flag. flag. Yeah, what percentage do you think? Like the ones I do, <laughs> <laughs> or just. <laughs> yeah, what percentage of those were you just uh, were you just joshing? Like the Jussie Smollett, uh, like forty percent. Is it is it like twenty percent, or do you think it's like ninety percent? Uh probably closer to twenty. I don't think ninety percent. But there's not that many people out but there again, the, drawing there's like not that many hate swastikas crimes. all over the place. That's not true. There's a lot of people like every. I feel like every day there's someone posting like oh another like you know some guy wrote the n word on the walls or whatever that's a hate crime yeah that's just kind of stuff that counts but, but, yeah. but, but what if you don't know who wrote like the color of the person who wrote it but the, they never don't have to they just assume oh that's what i'm saying oh you're right if you include actual where there was like physical crime yeah, i'm talking about hate crime like a, a crime of violence or whatever like probably less like a jesse small i mean like there was like in the in, you know in the last week in the uh bronx or whatever you see the guy driving around shooting people randomly i didn't see that scooter it's pretty crazy on the weekend like literally what this guy had a ghost gun like one of those ones that you print yourself, oh. I guess. I think that's what they said it was. And uh, he was on a scooter, like one of those just like e-scooters that all the delivery people. And he's just like driving around the Bronx, just total strangers, just going. But Lighten it up. But he's not a white guy, so not a hate crime. You don't hear about that too much. Oh, I mean, it was in the news, but it's just like, they don't, you're like, that's not, even though the, they're just like, okay, that can't be a hate crime uh -huh. or whatever. So like, I don't know, but I'm like, I'm sure he didn't like those people. It's hard to trust any of those stats because they're all so politicized. Like even with the stuff. Like, you know, go sh shooting up like a supermarket full of black people like that thing in Buffalo. You're like, probably a hate crime. Well, there's that guy that's kind of blowing the whistle. One of the big tactics they use is they'll have like five guys that went and do something and then they make sure to prosecute them all as like different cases so they can say it's like five separate like sure, crimes sure, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then they can be like, it'll be like a domestic terrorist thing, right? And then they'll be like, look, it was 17 domestic terrorist things, but it was like all just really, it was all one. Yeah, yeah. It was like one conspiracy, but they like separate them or something. They separate them to pad the numbers and stuff like that. That was some guys were kind of blowing the whistle on that whole thing. <clears throat> yeah, but I don't like, yeah, I don't know about like do hate crimes exist sure i don't think there's a lot of them there's yeah a lot of crime there you go yeah a lot of i mean a lot of crime in toronto actually a lot of shipping going down there what do you mean shipping no shit i've been going down you see like that dude got stabbed on the subway there i did pretty, see that pretty crazy and then the woman and queen and carla right by the old corner got uh randomly like these three guys were just like in some altercation she was like walking home from lunch she got shot and killed that's friggin' out of control. Pretty I just crazy. shooting a woman for no reason. Well, they, I think they're just like, she was like a total, that's like the total final destination shit right there where she's just like walking to go grab like a fucking Timmy's or something and then just like <laughs> catches a stray. Catching a stray. Just like, all right, that's it for you. Woo! Easy come, easy go. But I will say on the on the affirmative action stuff, it is a little bit like don't hate the player, hate the game. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Because there's this guy, there's an Indian dude, right? And he got into medical school by pretending he's black. I mean, how do you not almost? You know, and that's why I was almost like that was it what, is funny. Because we were sorry. My note that I have for this is don't hate the player, hate the game. You can't hate the game. You know what I mean? Of course. It really isn't like. 
Well, yeah, well, that's what you're saying for acting. It's like the guy that's like, you know, you basically, like a service that can be like, oh, they're non-binary, we can get your gender changed. Like, you need this, we'll give you, uh, like, we have a chief swear you in. Like, like a service that can just give you a little something, something of whatever you need to get the position. Yeah, that's like, uh, I, I can't remember the college. I think it was Brown College or some, like, g- good <laughs> institution, like a college, and it recently came out that, like, 40% of the students there identify as LGBT. And you're like, well, at some point, it's negatively affecting you to not do that. Oh, of course. Like at some point someone's like looking around like you're a chick and you're just like, there's no, like I can be LGBT. Like I, that's you know, easy. It's every, so easy. Like you're every not, single girl in college, like 80% of girls in college could say, yeah, I'm LGBT. And if you're just like a white chick, you're like, fuck, this is really, I'll kiss one girl. Yeah, sure. But they don't even ask. Right. It's just like, yeah, you're so, but like the whole thing is you're like, this is actually causing me a problem to not do this so yeah. then everybody's like okay well then i guess we're all lgbt and we're, we're going to reset this whole thing that was my favorite thing at cbc when i had to fill out all the diversity reports and say who's gay and who's not and, and just like <laughs> filling it out with people's <laughs> names saying they're gay i can't like just putting paul's name on there or something then yeah. send him the form be like i already filled out half of it yeah, don't like, <laughs> Then he, he signs his app and then he's just like agent calls him 10 minutes later to be like, I booked you a TV show. He goes, what? I didn't even audition. He goes, I know. I just, like, just wanted you. All Real time. Michael Scott situation. You go, all right, everyone, who's gay? A catering guy already got you. <laughs> <laughs> Wardrobe, got you. I don't, listen, you know, I don't need you. Yeah. But the, so this Indian dude is just so funny because like, um, obviously to the conclusion where you basically have like, you know, one campus, it's just like all black people and it's just like all Indian dudes being like and my brother my brother what is up my brother <laughs> all you do is shave your head if you got dark skin yeah, you just to shave yeah, your head yeah, yeah. you just make Although sure you don't grow any like hair Raj or like Suresh or something it's like yes yeah, Suresh it's uh, my African brother what is what is happening <laughs> yeah how good is what that what is happening my guy <laughs> yeah, I'm my gay so I was, I was loving the idea of just all the Indian bros on campus taking, like, going in for the black spots. <laughs> he did it in 1998, too. So it's been yeah, going on for a while. like a cautionary tale, though. Said he had like a 3.1 GPA. But then also what this Indian guy said is he did it to get in because obviously he was like, his parents probably wanted him to go to good yeah. school or whatever. And then, so he did it to get in. And then once he got in, he was like, yeah, it was way too hard. Yeah. Was, I'm crappy at school. <laughs> That's what he said. So then he's like, and then I failed. And so then like that spot got taken away from someone who deserved it. So he did it and he goes, I felt bad about it. Like that's the yeah. kind of takeaway. He's like, don't do this. Yeah. You don't got to make the same mistake. But also that, that he's just like, if someone else in a similar position with a similarly bad GPA, he's like, you're not doing them any favor. You don't want to go too high up. You know what I mean? You might want, you're like, you might want like a family friend to pull some strings to get you to play on the, you know, the team like just above, but you don't want to go two teams just above because yeah, now you're yeah. going to be getting screwed. You but know, you're, again, you're like eight teams. You're probably it's like, like when they put it. No. They when someone like you know it's like when they weasel someone onto a comedy show that like she, they weren't really ready for and then they just get friggin you know destroyed yeah because it's, it's like I guess you yeah you got the spot but it's like then what you know yeah that's what one of our buddies always said he goes you always hear these people being like oh I booked this festival this festival he goes you never really hear how they did <laughs> <laughs> you don't hear too much about how the set went yeah the only thing you hear about is that they uh, can't air that. <laughs> Which I've heard a lot of that. That's like a huge thing you hear about in Canada is, is people doing these like galas and you go, yeah, they couldn't air it. Uh, <laughs> I've heard that 20 times, literally 20 stories of like a JFL gala and they go, yeah, it went real bad. But it's everyone getting the spots. It's just all these. It's just like a bunch of Indian guys acting gay and black. <laughs> My brother. <laughs> oh, it is me. Ayatha <laughs> Queen. He's my N words. <laughs> Everyone's like, Arr. but there's no black people on the campus to see it. Yeah, because they, they took all the spots. <laughs> and there's another one, which this woman. She goes, she questions if it's a red flag because her 40-year-old husband has been in college for 20, 20 years. And this bro, he's an aboriginal dude from Australia. Yeah. And they basically have a thing where if you're aboriginal, and Canada has some versions of this and some other places have this, but it's like you get big grants, right? So college is free and then they give you money on top of that for res and whatever. Yeah, they, right? Oh, this one's so funny. So this dude's getting 40 grand a year. And he's, he's going on his like 19th degree right now at this point. He's so, year 20. He's year 20. So this guy's the ultimate Van Wilder too probably tuning up the young fucking college kids too. <laughs> 
So this guy's he's doing his fifth degree right now, and he just gets forty grand a year. Yeah. And if you remember how college is, even it's more, like, I think actually, so there are all these other like. There's never brands. been an easier life than imagine your college can't your college and probably somewhere like that's probably sitting around like you know you know ten k a year or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then your residence is like another ten. So he's just like basically on top of everything, he's sitting there with like twenty five thirty k a no, year free no, money no, after no, expenses. No, no, he doesn't have expenses because that's the thing is he lives like with his wife. I'm including tuition. Or whatever. No, they probably just give him tuition and then they're paying him on top. So right. I think so he's like clearing. 30. I no, said. 40 or like more or whatever. He and, still doesn't uh, pay tuition. Oh, he doesn't pay that's tuition. That's what I'm saying. He's not, he's not paying tuition. He's not paying anything. Plus, he gets you're money. You're right. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're he, just getting 40 it's a grand a year. He's like making a living. On top of, yeah, and you have somewhere to. Yeah, and so, all you got to do is pass, right? Because like, Exactly. Because if you're doing badly, they go, yeah, he's disadvantaged, obviously. <laughs> what do you think? He's just going to come in and get straight A's? He's yeah. disadvantaged. And she's explained how his current job position is that I have a call college student he's been attending for the past two decades the issue is she's worried of how other people will view him i mean i feel like dudes would view that as like fucking beat the game yeah it's a guy who beat the system I and that's the thing he, he so, so and like a big piece of context here is that he uh there's like these slots that are available and he keeps getting them because nobody else is applying for them so he's not even like taking away mm. from somebody yeah because some people on the thing were kind of saying like well he's taking away from people and blah blah it's like well then change the thing so but he can do 19 though, degrees not taking away from anybody because it's specifically for aborigine and like there's just like some years he's the only person who applies for it. <laughs> okay. So he's like legitimately not taking anything away. They're like, we have this money. It's available. Whoever wants to take it like it's I don't know what happens if nobody takes it but. I'd love to have this guy in the podcast. He sounds uh. like the goat dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing his fucking 20th degree on the gun the doll. <laughs> Probably super smart. Well, I, who knows if he's so smarter? Smart. Well, I mean, he's very well read. I'll tell you that much. Oh, but like, oh, yeah. how many introductory degrees do you have to take? Like, the probably some of them share so many of the same courses too. Like, guys probably taking his like. I'll tell you one thing. I did stats, and then I I, I switched from uh, business to like math economics. If yeah. you remember, yeah, yeah. And then uh, one of the things was I had to take a different stat. Like, they basically have different stats, so I had to take a different stats, which is kind of the same stats, and I got a hundred on it. Yeah, because my second time taking, I got a hundred in the course i didn't get yeah. a single question wrong that's, right on the wrong on the two uh two things and it was my the first time i already did pretty good but the second time i got 100 can you imagine the fifth time uh -oh. you had to take one of those credits where Some it's like bullshit sociology class you're basically right? taking sociology the fifth time and it's multiple choice scan that is questions. true though there's only so many departments and so many classes <laughs> this guy's just running his way through every single department yeah i mean i guess you're just doing different degrees you're doing like four years of a so sociology but that's the thing yeah you're right because like in a sociology degree a philosophy philosophy degree huge overlap there. they all have tons of overlap but they won't yeah you to basically some of them they like you can't transfer the quest credits but a lot of times people had to take the same yeah, course essentially again, yeah. twice but there's a different version of it that's funny Right, because they have like math stats and then they had like business stats, you know what I mean? Yeah. So technically it's different, but it's like not. And I was already good at it to begin with. So it's like, yeah, you beat the game, sort of. Yeah, this guy's a goat. I mean, this guy's. I love this guy. Love this guy. Yeah, he's winning. Yeah, so I guess maybe we'll hate him if we saw what he's posting or stuff like that. But on paper, we <laughs> oh, like think him. I think he's like a total indoctrinated <laughs> college kid. <laughs> he, he might be. At 40. <laughs> this guy might be a <laughs> fucking piece of work for all we know. <laughs> no, you know what fucking a couple years of college does to someone? Imagine yeah. what 40 students. Student years does to someone. I mean, he's still this guy's girlfriend. brain might be fried into it. I mean, he hasn't chopped his dick off, so there's something. <laughs> Surprised he hasn't chopped his dick I off. Know. The fourth agreed adding. So they, yeah, there were people that were sort of, and they go. The girl goes, despite not having an issue with it. She obviously doesn't like it because I can imagine why a girl. She's going to a normal job, and this guy's back to school again. <laughs> Four months off every summer. This guy's living. Oh, oh yeah, she surf probably, life, oof. dude. She probably hates that surf life. But pays the bills, man. Surf life. Do, 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 do you think he gets a surf life? He gets a part-time job in the summer, like a real college kid. No, <laughs> I don't think he does shit. I think this guy is cruising, my man. The last, well, not the last, but the the probably legend of the week, which we should probably uh, probably mention. The legend of the week is the guy who died during his affair with the uh, uh, the nurse at the hospital. So this guy. Basically, as cool as you could get. We were actually looking at uh, me and uh, Tony were looking up. Um, is there a list of guys that died during sex and do like a montage of legends? Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of guys have gone out that way. Totally. I don't know. There's some probably famous ones. 
Well, because you're too old to be banging, right? So you go, ah, ah. Sometimes then, you're too old to be banging. Sometimes it's just like. Uh, I was doing a joke about this. The girl doesn't know to call the cops because she just thinks you're coming weird. Ah, <laughs> ah, ah. Yeah, well, just take it easy. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> well, this chick was trying to cover her ass. Like, I know. She didn't call the cops. But I, I mean, I'm sure there's like a. Dude, if you're there's an old guy pulling nurses and got the nurse to wheel him out to her car. He wasn't smash. old. He was like 40. Yeah, I guess he that's just had some crazy. Cool, he was like on dialysis. He had some like crazy like uh, kidney condition yeah, or something. Pimpitis. And then yeah, yeah, and then he just started smashing the nurse and then fucking croaked mid smash. And the opposite of that. What, what was your uh, the hockey thing when the guy died on the ice? Guy died on the ice. Everyone ran over. People like thought it was a joke at first. Then people started freaking pumping him, trying to do everything. Kind of, no one knew what to do. Then basically went over to the like thing. Everyone's kind of standing, and the the ambulance like takes him away. And then we get word that he's like died on arrival, kind of thing. And everyone's just in the dressing room. And then everyone's like sitting there silently. <laughs> and then one guy cracked a beer and stands up and he goes, "Hey boys, no better place to go." Eh? <laughs> And everyone just looked at him like, buddy. And then he just I feel like, like that with sex, though. You go, <laughs> no better way to go, huh? <laughs> that actually, but that actually is no way to better play to yeah. go. This wasn't the best way to I go. Know, yeah. 45 years old in a recreational <laughs> hockey game at 3 p.m. on a friggin' Sunday. Ugh. This guy's got like a friggin' four-year-old kid. He was yeah. just out of shape. The thing was, this guy was just out of shape. I think you start to... You you know you gotta kind of get into shape a little bit before you get pop you know you know oh let me just start recreational sure. basketball back up and it's like kind of I mean that's why that's why shoveling snow kills so many people because it's like sure you're, you're out of shape and then you just go I could see do that. this thing and then you just die your heart's like yeah I can't do this and I could see that oh yeah so let's talk a little bit before we go about okay did you want to do a husband's special relationship or a Jap GPT guy. It's Danny's choice. Dealer's choice. No husband special relationship. We'll do chat GPT in the page. My husband and his buddy's got a special relationship and the kids are catching on. <laughs> <laughs> Gist of the story is she married a gay guy. Yeah. But it is pretty funny. The she's way like not it's not like the gay guy where you go like I realized he was gay and then we just kind of like for the kids stay together it's legitimately They're like in a relationship. if me and you just boned every time we hung out like, yeah that's kind of what it but is but like the chicks know she's like into it she's like yeah I'm like he's like he just needs to like fuck blow off do, steam blow off steam and fuck his buddy and like I'm cool with it <laughs> and like our relationship's great but like the kids are catching on the kids are like Whoa, those guys are hanging around not a lot he always comes back tired out <laughs> Dear how to do it. My husband and I have been married for 25 years, and we were together for five years before that. We got four adult kids. The youngest moved to college. And from time, from the time things got serious, he was very open about the fact he occasionally hooks up with his male friend, Charlie. That's a crazy way to, like, and he goes, it was a take it or leave it situation. I, I don't know how you'd even propose that. I guess nowadays it'd be a little easier, but 20 years being like, listen, I love you, baby. There's th something you got to know. Me and Charlie, we hit the golf course. You know, we bone, okay? Yeah. Capiche? <laughs> this is going to be a take it or leave it. There's going to be no changes. Charlie, I don't love him like I love you. You know, this is just a dude. This is just a hole. I see him as nothing more than a hole. <laughs> this is something I need. What I need to keep the demons at bay, okay? So he's just one of, he's literally like, he's probably like, look, if you want to choose to break up our family over this. <laughs> Yeah, if you're gonna be a baby about it, if I can't, oh, I can't suck off Charlie once or twice a week. It's not a you big deal. You know Charlie, he's clean. <laughs> you like Charlie? It's just so funny because it really is. He's presenting it like no, it's not. He's not in love with Charlie. Yeah, Ugh. he just likes to smash. He's not gay. Charlie from time to time. Yes, the boys get together. They go on a trips. Yeah, maybe it's like if you were there, maybe I'd smash you. But it's Charlie's. You know, sitting on the bed. It's like okay, I don't know. Let's give it a spin. <laughs> Take it for a spin. We don't even like it the yeah, whole it's time. It's like if you're not around and Charlie's around, I guess. We don't even like it. It's like, oh, oh fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to hit the dinner? Yeah. All right, boys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lights out. We got an early game tomorrow. Hitting the, hitting the, hitting the dungeon, <laughs> so to speak. Take it or leave it situation. I occasionally pursue casual relationships with other men. So this guy's, I guess, he is pretty gay. Yeah. And he's like, yes, do whatever you want. I just wanted to have kids with you. You are a baby-making machine. Sure. That's all you'll ever be. You're a bleeding demon, mm -hmm. and you'll never be anything more than that. So a lot of times, here's the problem. Charlie and his husband work together. 
that do work together. And they both used to travel a lot. So, uh, it sounds like a lot of these travel trips didn't happen. It's like, hey, they work at the hardware store, and they're yeah. like, we're out of hammers. Like, oh, we have to go get some in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Got to go straight to the the mill where they make them. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're... <laughs> <laughs> we're out of screws on the back thing. I think we're going to have to head over to San Francisco <laughs> to pick some up. They got the best deals there. <laughs> we're also going to have to take Charlie's motorcycle. Yeah. And then uh, they used to travel a lot for work. So a lot of times we would have sex and they would be during the business trips and occasionally before it would be here and there at Charlie's place before he's married. So Charlie's married too. The four of them sounds like they know each other and hang out. So it's a real weird situation yeah, they got going on here. That's an odd one. Now they're empty nesters. They work They work less, so they have to just go on normal trips. And they have more of their fun trips. And the kids are starting to be like, hey, obviously dad's gay, right? Yeah. Well, they just kind of know that you know they're all their friends' parents don't do that. Yeah, why, yeah, but they don't seem to do that. Why are they always ch- yeah, why, changing together? Yeah, why, yeah, yeah, yeah. why don't Tully's you... Tully's turning and, his friggin' ass into a chocolate factory. <laughs> <laughs> why is there always shit everywhere? <laughs> yeah. I honestly didn't think they'd notice. But our... Tw- but our uh, 21-year-old daughter said, hey, where's dad? Said he was on the golf trip. She goes, they spend a lot of time together. It's like they're married. And then mom goes, no, they aren't. They are not married. I'm married. He's just a hole. That's all he'll ever be. He's nothing more than that. How, like, w- does this end when just, like, what, when they die? <laughs> like, do those dudes, like, they're going to be banging it out until they die? Probably gets a lot grosser when you're fucking 72, you know that's what I mean? That's what I'm saying, You have though. enough to only bang your wife, let alone put some, save that's some for like, Charlie. That's what I'm saying. Like, is this just indefinite? I don't know. But... Props to Charlie. Props to the legend of the month who died during sex. The true king. Catch me. No better way to go out, huh, boys? No no better way to go out, eh? And this has been The Boys Cast. Yay, yay.